Hey there folks, Paul Marco from Student of the Gun, and today I'd like to talk to you guys about the home defense shotgun. And I'm guessing that a whole bunch of you out there recently went out and purchased 12 gauge pump action shotguns for home defense. This may even be your first shotgun or your first home defense shotgun. So let's take a moment and talk about what we've got. Now right here in my hands, this is a Remington 870 Express. Now originally this gun started out life as a police shotgun. It was a trade-in gun, I bought it. I sent it off to Wilson Combat and they put some uh, new furniture on it and they refinished it. But this is the Remington 870. Very, very common and very, very popular pump action defensive shotgun. What else do we have? Right here, we have the Mossberg Model 590, 12 gauge. And this one has a bunch of special features as Picatinny rail and sights up top on top of the receiver. I actually added the forend with the light. It has a sight up front as opposed to a bead. It has a vented barrel. Now this particular gun will hold eight rounds in the magazine tube plus one in the chamber. So you're starting out with nine, but obviously it's going to be long and it's going to be quite a bit heavier than a shorter shotgun, such as this one. This police gun holds four in the magazine tube, that's two and three quarter inch shells, and it has one in the chamber, so for a total of five. Now, are they about the same size? They're close, but this one's definitely a lot longer and a lot heavier than this one is. And if size matters to you, if you want a more compact shotgun, well, then you're going to go with the other one. And you don't worry about compactness or, or the size, then this might be the one you want to go to. Now, the main difference is, and Mossberg, and Rick, I know that you guys are like, oh, there's other shotguns out there, and I understand that. I totally get it. But the most popular manufacturers of pump-action 12-gauge shotguns in the United States are Mossberg and Remington. They function almost identically as far as the slide is concerned. The main difference between the Mossberg and the Remington is with the Mossberg, you have what's called a tang-mounted safety, which is uh, ambidextrous, so I can work it with my left hand back and forth. I can work it with my right hand back and forth. It works the same way. Some people really like that. And then on the Remington, you have a standard cross bolt safety. Now this is a, an add-on from Van Comp, but essentially it works like this. You push it from the right to the left, it's on fire. Left to the right, it's on safe. And then if you were a left-handed person, you'd have to reach under or do it the opposite way. So uh, these guns do come in left-handed configuration. I don't know if they reversed the uh, cross bolt safety or not in left-handed. Uh, some people like the Mossberg better, some people like the Remington better, you know, chocolate, vanilla, whatever you like. Let's talk about ammunition. Let's talk about shotgun ammunition. There's a lot of ammunition out there. That's what makes the shotgun so versatile. That's one of the big benefits of the shotgun. But one of the drawbacks of the shotgun is that people get confused or they get overwhelmed by the vast amount of ammunition that's out there. Okay? You've got your standard slugs. This is high brass. What is high brass? If you're a brand new shotgun owner, I'm going to give you a quick hint. The taller the brass, the heavier the recoil. That's mean, that means how hard it hits into your shoulder. So tall brass equals bang into your shoulder. Low brass equals less recoil. See where we're going here? So less bang into your shoulder. We've got a slug. This is just one piece of ammunition, a, a single projectile, right? It's one projectile that goes out, it, like a rifle bullet. There's only one. Now you have double-out buck. Now a double-out buck shell, you're going to have eight or nine pellets generally in a two and three-quarter inch shell. So you've got nine pieces of ammo, of projectile, of lead flying down range, all right? And then you have various game loads, bird shot, rabbit shot, pheasant, duck, goose, whatever, and they're going to have various sized pellets in them. Now the size of the pellets in the field load, in the hunting load, is going to vary tremendously. For instance, those that are used for geese and ducks are larger, those that are used for dove and pheasant and maybe rabbits and squirrels are a lot smaller. 
many people have said, well, if you're going to use it for home defense, that is, you know, shooting in and around your house, you should just use birdshot. You should just use birdshot because it's safer. All right. Don't use slugs. Don't use buckshot because birdshot is safer because it's less likely to, quote, over penetrate. All right. Who has been using shotguns to stop bad people for 100, 120, 130 years now? Law enforcement. Police officers have been using shotguns to, I know they have rifles now, but the primary long arm for the last 100 years for police officers has been a shotgun, right? Now, police officers don't just use the shotgun when somebody's a long way away. That's not the point of the shotgun. The shotgun is a power tool. The shotgun is used because a 12-gauge double-lot buck shell is far more powerful when it comes to putting down and stopping a bad guy than anything that a cop would be carrying on their belt, especially 38 special revolvers and so forth. So the shotgun is not used as a distance tool. It's used as a power tool. I want you guys to understand that. All right. So if police officers have been using shotguns as power tools to stop bad guys for at least 100 years, maybe longer, what load do police officers use by and large? Double out buck. And you say, well, yeah, they're using double out buck because police officers only have to shoot people in wide open fields, away from buildings, away from cars, away from people. Is that true? And you're like, no, that's obviously not true. Police officers use their shotguns in town, in buildings, in basements, in alleyways, in parking lots, all over the place. And they shoot people that are relatively close. Uh, they do that with double ot buck. And the reason they don't do it with birdshot is because birdshot is going to leave a horrific wound in the person, but it's not necessarily going to stop them. If you're a new gun owner, especially if you're someone that just recently went out to purchase a firearm, whether it's a shotgun, a pistol, a rifle, whatever, because you want to use it for self-defense, not sporting, not games, not hunting, you want to use that gun, you went out and you bought this gun because you're afraid someone's going to break into your house and try and steal all your food or your generator or your gasoline or whatever. And so you said, I've got to have something to defend my house. Okay. If you are defending your house, if you are defending your family, your children against an evil attacker, a bad man that wants to hurt you and take your stuff, kill you, rape your wife, you know, murder your children, that is not the time to be focused on, well, I'll just wound them. If you just wound them and they kill you, you lose. Yes, yes, you lose. Now, have people been killed by birdshot? Yes. People have been killed by 22 long rifle. Just because people have been killed with 22 long rifle pistols, little rimfire pistols, doesn't mean that every police officer in America should switch over to the Ruger Mark IV and shoot 22 because of anecdotal evidence. Is there anecdotal evidence that people have been shot with birdshot and have died? Yes. But far more have been shot with birdshot and lived than have died. And you say, well, I don't want to murder anyone, Paul. I don't want to kill anybody. It's not about that. It's about making them stop. If one, two, three bad people come into your home intent on doing bad, horrible things to you, you need to make them stop immediately. Not hurt them so that they walk away and feel bad later. You need to make them stop right now. And that's the whole point of the shotgun. The shotgun is a tool that you use to make bad people stop right now. How do we work the shotgun? A pump action is very simple, it's very straightforward, but it's not semi-automatic. If you've ever gone out and shot a semi-auto Ruger pistol, or maybe an AR-15, or maybe a semi-auto 22, or whatever, you're like, oh, this is easy, I just point it, pull the trigger, bang, 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 bang. Not so with a pump action shotgun. You're going to have to learn how to master the action. You're gonna to have to learn how to work the controls, and how do we do that? Now, this is where birdshot comes in for you. If you're going to go out and you're going to shoot a lot, which you should be with a shotgun if you want to get used to it, that's when you go to the store and you buy a whole bunch of pheasant loads, rabbit loads, whatever, birdshot, the small stuff, because it's less expensive. Let me tell you what, these are right around a buck, maybe a little bit more a piece, and these are maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 cents a piece. It's a big difference. Slugs, 
you know, probably anywhere from a buck to a buck and a half a piece. You don't want to go practice and shoot a buck every shot. You're not going to shoot that much. But if you can buy, you know, a whole box of these or a case of these, it's economical, right? What do you want to be shooting on? Now, you could shoot on cardboard, and what we've done is we've patterned our, our buckshot on here. But if you're going to be shooting and practicing, you want to find yourself a steel silhouette or some steel. Now, I know many of you, this might be tough, but if you go to a local range and you talk to some people, they're like, oh yeah, you know, there's steel over on this bay, there's steel over on that bay. Uh, can you get away with shooting paper and cardboard? Yeah, you can, but if you shoot birdshot at paper and cardboard, after two, three, four shells, there's just gonna be a big jagged, ragged hole in the middle, and you're seeing and you're getting no response. So if you're gonna practice with a shotgun, and I highly recommend that you do, get out there and learn how to work the machine, use birdshot and use steel. Now, do you obviously want to use the buckshot on the range? Yes, and I would highly recommend that whatever buckshot you decide to buy, for instance, if you go to your favorite Walmart, you're probably going to find something like this, either black box or silver box. They're on the shelf. These are the high brass hunting double out buck. If you're a little more adventurous or if you're a gun person or you know where to buy good ammo, you can get the federal premium flight controlled reduced recoil buckshot. You're like, well, I don't want reduced recoil. I want it to be hard. Don't worry, don't worry about the felt recoil here. Worry about the felt recoil downrange, all right? If you're going to buy double out buck, what I want you guys to do is I want you to take whatever shotgun you buy, take whatever buckshot you purchased, then get a piece of cardboard. If you can't find silhouette targets, great. Get an empty pizza box, open it up, staple it up, and I want you to pace off seven yards, put an X in the center and shoot it. And I want you to see how big that pattern is. Then go 10 yards, then go 15, and maybe even 20. And I say, but Paul, you said that a shotgun is a close-up tool. It actually is. What I want you to do then, after you've done that, go three yards away and you say, oh, three yards is really close. How big is your home? How big is your actual house? If you've got a shotgun and you're in your house and someone breaks in the front door, put your back against the farthest wall from the front door and then measure off how many feet it is. I bet you that it's about three, four, five yards. If you have a living room that's longer than 10 yards, you got a big house. Most of the shots that you're gonna be taking in and around your house are gonna be in the three, five to seven yard range maximum. And you say, okay, great, what is your point, Paul? My point is this, many people are living with this fallacy that it's impossible to miss with a shotgun loaded with double up buck. They watch movies, they watch TV, they're like, I'll just point it in the general direction, press the trigger, and it's gonna fill the hallway with buckshot, and I'm not gonna miss the guy. What I want you to do is I want you to actually go to uh, the range with a piece of cardboard, your buckshot, walk four yards away, five yards away, maybe three, and I want you to point the center and fire. I want you to look at what size your pattern is. Then you're gonna be like, oh, the pattern's only like this big. Yeah, if the pattern's only that big, you can miss with a shotgun. You've gotta do your part, you've gotta aim it. Now, is a shotgun easier to aim and hit with than a pistol? Why is that? Because with a pistol, you only have two points of contact with the gun. You have your strong hand and your support hand, or maybe you only have your strong hand. Now, with a shotgun, you actually have four points of contact, support hand, strong hand, shoulder, and cheek. Now I have four points of contact on that gun. So my likelihood of hitting the target and of controlling the gun are far better than they would be with a handgun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know that's a lot for you guys to think about, but you deserve it. You need to be armed with information, not Hollywood myth and mythology, not the stuff that you heard or overheard at a gun shop or at a gun show, but the real genuine facts. I'm your host, Paul Markle. I'll talk to you again real soon.